we are getting a closer look at who President Biden plans to nominate as U.S. ambassadors. Joining us to discuss the list, former ambassador to Hungary, Nancy Brinker, is also the host of Conversations with Nancy Brinker. It airs right here on Newsmax. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Well, wonderful. And, you know, before we get to who's filling these ambassador roles, I'd like to ask you about something we saw recently, flags flying outside of U.S. embassies. In fact, yesterday, the U.S. Embassy to the Holy See tweeted out this image of a rainbow flag with the caption, celebrating Pride Month with the Pride flag on display during the month of June. We've also recently seen images of other foreign embassies flying Black Lives Matter flags, this on the one-year anniversary mm -hmm. of George Floyd's death. And I want to ask mm -hmm. you, based on your experience and, and how you view politics today, do you believe U.S. embassies should fly these flags? Um, I think that U.S. embassies, remember, the ambassador uh, uh, representing a, a U.S. embassy overseas is, is considered the most important American in the country and hence has the obligation to represent all that's going on in America or as much as possible, including some of the social movements, which people may question uh, in importance. But it is important for us to be able to, you know, truly exhibit democracy. We are still considered the leader of democracy in the world. And so that that's why you see those those flags flying and you see other interests. And it's really, really important that we keep that tone in our country as nonpartisan as possible, even though you are appointed by the serving president. It's really important to have as much uh, to say about who we are in America and what we're doing overseas. I was wondering when I saw the pride flag specifically, again, flying uh, at the Holy See embassy, uh, mm -hmm. some people yeah. were, were talking online if perhaps we would see a similar flag at uh, other U.S. embassies, maybe in the Middle East, where that might not mm -hmm. be as accepted mm -hmm. by cultures right. there. Right. Yes. And, and uh, just as we don't accept uh, things about others' cultures in, others in other countries, um, we all may not agree on everything, but... It is important for us to at least have a voice about issues that are happening. And by the way, it doesn't mean everybody in America agrees with it. It's just that it's an issue. And and um, hopefully um, it's time for the gay pride uh, movement to have its place in some uh, in, in all of our uh, embassies. Um, and it's important that we have uh, we have truth to words, that we we speak the truth about who we are and how we welcome other people's um, points of view. And they may not be syn synergistic with ours, but that's the point of having an embassy, places to discuss these issues and uh, to move forward on, on areas and channels of communication. Uh, and just final question for you on the flags. Again, maybe we might not realize that these embassies fly anything other than the American flag. Um, right. I know May was Military Appreciation Month. March is mm -hmm. Women's Month mm -hmm. as well. Do you think this could open the door for different flags flying outside U.S. embassies around the world? I think it, it really should. I think this is a great beginning. And to your point, there should be one for Women's History Month. And again, it's the advocacy behind it, which, of course, we have the freedom in America to be advocates. And so in a way, it's a very good way to open doors for all of these issues that are important to us and that, again, have messages of democracy, free speech, um, what we come to expect from each other. All right. Let's get now to these nominations that are coming out. We're hearing reports that the president plans to nominate Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti to India. Uh, I want to go through the mm -hmm. list, but let's start off with your thoughts on that role. Well, you know, that that's a very good appointment in that role. Uh, Los Angeles is a very diverse city in a in a state having some issues, uh, the largest state in, in the country. Uh, it's actually probably a very good kind of appointment. The most important thing about an ambassador is that somehow uh, there is some relationship to the president. This is the president's appointee to um, to the country. And um, so I, I think it's a it's a good appointment. Also wanted to ask you um, about the role of an ambassador, especially during times of conflict, when we'd seen recently mm -hmm. this conflict in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas, Palestinians as well. Right. There was no ambassador to Israel very quickly. Do you think that would have made a difference, perhaps, if there was a U.S. voice present? 
I think it's it's always important to have U.S. Voice President. Um, actually, I left on 9-11 to go to Hungary when I served there. And it is very important for, for all countries to know that they have uh, a channel, a voice, an opportunity to speak to an American who has high access uh, in our country. All right. Very interesting. And, of course, we appreciate your perspective. Nancy Brinker joining us live on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank and, of you. course, you at home, you can watch Conversations with Nancy Brinker right here on Newsmax. It's going to air every Saturday, 8.30 a.m. Be sure to watch. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.